Back with another video guys and in today's video we are here at Property Circle member Jamal Campbell's rent to rent serviced accommodation. Now not a massive fan of serviced accommodation but I've done a video before and I want to get another take on it because this is more of a professional rent to rent service accommodation. So let's go inside, take a look and catch up with Jamal. Welcome to the penthouse apartment, one bedroom in Birmingham city centre, prime location and I've been here before, great space, beautiful views and I really really like this apartment. Jamal's in the other room, we're going to sit down with him, talk about the pros and cons of rent to rent service accommodation and just ask him a number of questions to give you guys at home a better insight into rent to rent and service accommodation. So let's get started. Here we are, we're with Jamal Campbell. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having Massively me. Massively appreciated. And what a beautiful apartment. Thank you. You happy with it? Yeah. What was it like when you came here? So it was a bit messy. Um, the previous tenant, not to call anybody out, but the previous tenant had, had made the everywhere black and it was just horrible to look at really. Okay. So um, I came in, did a fresh paint everywhere, cleaned up all the floors, cleaned up all the skirting boards. And just, um, yeah, made it how it looks now. It's beautiful. Really, really, really nice. Views are incredible, aren't they? Yeah. Rent to rent. Explain it to me, please. You know my take on it because we're friends. Yeah. And I'm trying to let people at home know what I don't like um, or what my strategies aren't. But obviously, I still want to explore everything and learn mm -hmm. because I don't know the ins and outs of everything. Of so what got you into rent to rent? So how, I, how it basically started was um, 2018, my father passed away from cancer and uh, my brother was in the house by himself it was a big four bedroom house he couldn't handle the bills so what we did was we started to rent out the rooms so we sort of did like a HMO and upstairs was like its own separate unit yeah so um, I said to him why don't we do SA up there and like rent out the other rooms and do you know get some money for you to pay the bills he said yeah cool so um, we did that and that's sort of how it started really okay it's a crazy story yeah because yeah. obviously someone passing away yeah it's not a good it's not it was it was it was a rough time but in in those in those moments you need to find you know strength and find ways how to handle and, and overcome things so wow that was one of the things that i did um for him i'm glad that's good that's really nice actually because something like that can actually crush you can't it oh and yeah under yeah. the pressure your brother could have easily just thought nah i don't yeah. want to know I've sold the property and moved on with something else yeah but you turned it into something now where i'm presuming that's where it came from because you saw that work yeah. And then you, was that in London? That was in London, yeah. Okay. That was in Wembley. And then what was your first one? What was your first rent to rent? So my first official one as, as a business yep. is this one here. Yeah. But um, I was helping a lot of people with their, with their stuff up until this point. Okay. So I knew the ins and outs, how to run, the, run it as a business, how to set it up, how to manage it all. Yeah. But I wasn't doing it myself. Okay. And then um, this one just came up and I thought, yeah, let me just let me do it. I'll okay. take it. What attracted you to rent to rent? So it was the, um, obviously your, 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 initial, your initial money up front is, is lower. So you don't need to buy the property. You can rent it from the landlord. Obviously the landlord needs to agree. They need to have, you need to have the contracts in place so that you're covered to do that. Um, and it's about having the, the options to control the property, earn some money from it whilst having a low output. But then also you can have it over three to four to five years okay. if you get 
you know, the agreement with the landlord and yep. just have cash flow coming in. When you come into a property that you're looking to rent, yeah. what's the first things you look for? So I look for the space. So firstly, with this one, I came in and the front room was right here. So I came into this space and I thought, okay, how can we utilize this? Does it have sockets around? Where can you put your furniture? Um, how are you going to dress it? To be honest, at the first, at the beginning, I didn't know where I was going to put everything. Okay. So it was over after I started decorating that, it all came to my head. Well, this one, I'm presuming, even before you viewed it, you was happy because oh, of the yeah. location, the yeah. street it's on. Yeah, I saw how bright it was in here, the windows. I saw the space, it looked big enough. And I thought, okay, I could do something with that. Yeah, was that yeah. from the photos? That you was saw from the that? photos, yeah. And then when you've walked in and you've created this, to be yeah. fair, because it is lovely. Yeah, it's, and it's very peaceful as well. We're in the middle of Birmingham city centre. Yeah. We're in a penthouse apartment and we can't hear nothing. Yeah. Which is crazy for Birmingham, especially on Newell Street, Colmore Road. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Out there, yeah. It's very busy out there, yeah. but you can't hear nothing. So I can imagine people who come here to stay two or three nights a month, when they come back again, they're like, that's where I want to be. Yeah. What else do you look for? So the space, where you can put the furniture. You obviously painted this, didn't you? Because you said. I painted the whole place. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously you staged it. Yes. All yourself? All by myself, yeah. Okay. I had some help from my wife. I can't take all the credit, but mostly by myself, yeah. Okay. Where do you take inspiration from when you're staging? Do you look on things, Pinterest, or is it just in your mind? So with this one, I had an idea that, right, I'm, I want to do a, a sort of a grey, grey theme. Mm -hmm. And then one morning when I was here, I woke up. I looked out the window and I was like, green, grey, white. I was like, that's it, that's the okay. one. So it just came to you? It just came to me, yeah. Okay, show me around some more of it, please. Okay, so let's head um, over this way. Yep. Cause this is a bit of a secret spot, which um, I didn't even know was here cause they didn't show it in the pictures. Yep. So around here, we've got another nice open window, nice open space, great views and a little balcony. Yep. Yeah, you ain't getting me out on there. Where you can step out. Holy shit. Nope, I not for it, me. I think it's great. Um, I'll try it. It's a little hidden feature. Which, Let's have um, a go. Ams, you got me? Yep. Because... No, no. This thing here is not holding... No, no, <laughs> no. Wow. That's some... Guys, seriously, I'm not just saying it. That's some scary shit out there. So, we have the lounge. Great space, very open. This little bit here, I don't know what it's for. What's it for? Well, the previous tenant had their, their dining table there yeah. and that's where they used to eat. Okay. Um, but I saw it and I was like, it could be like a, just a bit of space, extra space. I uh, put some uh, mirrors on the wall there and I put a coat hanger. Okay, and then you have the outside thing that I've just stood on. Didn't like that at all. <laughs> what is that for? Um, I think it's just sort of like fresh air, but I mean, People can use it to smoke, but I put this as a no smoking. Okay. So people don't come in and thinking they can smoke inside. Yeah. And if they see that and they do smoke, they it saves them, there. saves them going all the way down the stairs. Okay. Yeah. Show me some more, please. Okay. I just pray that you find God now. It's no replay. On my way up to the top now. That's on me, eh? Hey. And highs, highs with the lowest lows. That's like these days. Broad chain. So we have the kitchen. Yeah. Not a huge kitchen, but practical. Yes. What's needed. And... Obviously, there's, there's a view as well. <laughs> well not a great view, but there's a view. view. But there's a view, yeah. There's a view. So, with this, you supply the microwave. Do you supply anything else? You've got the kettle and toaster, obviously, coffee machine. Yeah. Is that normal with service accommodation to supply some, those kind of things? Yeah, some people don't do it, but you you have to understand, you, if you're coming to professionals, they drink coffee. Yeah. So, and not only do you want to have a kettle in there, I put a coffee machine as well, so it's easy. Yeah. It's easier. they got the instant coffee in here. All in there, coffee, hot chocolate, it's all in there. Okay. They've got the instructors how to use it, and then boom, they can have a quick coffee. Okay. So when you got this one, explain to me, forget explain to everyone else first, because yeah. I want to know, how do you go about getting your first rent to rent? What are the steps to secure your first property? So firstly, you need to, you need to look in an area where it's going to work. You need to know what strategy you're going to use because you can go for the parties, you can go for professionals, you can go for contractors, and you can just have a place there and just float on Airbnb as, and it looks horrible because there's a lot like that. 
Um, so you need to know what is it you want to achieve and um, what your target market is. Then you go out and find a property which is ideal to the situation. Um, for instance, with this one, it's in the city centre. So I was like, right, professional um, short-term accommodation for professionals. Yeah. Prime location, best location, I think. You know, you've got the, the, the transport there, you've got the Colmore Road just there, you've got the restaurants, you've got the bars, you've got the offices. So I went, okay, professional um, accommodation, and that's what I'm going to go with. And this one came up and I just looked at it, I thought, yeah, I'm taking that. Okay. Can you tell me what the rent of this is, or is that something you can't say? Yeah, the rent, the rent here is actually 695 so it's really cheap. For, for the location, yeah. a penthouse, that sounds crazy. It's mad. Yeah. £700 a month. Yeah. Wow. Well, I know that we have just rented a three-bedroom house in Warsaw for £1,000, and I, I can't believe this is £700 a month. That's yeah. crazy. I was, I was like, when I saw it, I was like, so how much is the rent? I was expecting to be told 1100 Yeah. But they said seven, just under 700 I was like... Give me that now, okay. you know, like there's a no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you signed a contract for? Uh, initially one year, because the agency wanted to see how I handle it all. At the minute, they're very happy and they're actually handling me more, more units. Yep. So, it's so how many units are you on right now? This one, and I've got two in the pipeline, which okay. I'm trying to secure by next week. So three by the end of the month. Yeah. And hmm, profit, that's a good one. What's your profit? So 695 is your rent. Yeah. Then what's your bills? So all in all, bills every month is about twelve hundred. Okay. That's with um, all my management um, stuff on the online services. Yes. The uh, water, electric, gas, um, council, tax. council tax as well. That's okay. all in there. So that's twelve hundred I use per month. Okay. So it's twelve hundred pound for that. Yeah. And how much does it rent out per night usually? So minimum, I do eighty five pounds. Okay. So the last person who, who checked out yesterday, they paid one forty for one night. Okay. So that's another thing I want to know about um, rent to rent, a service accommodation. You market on Airbnb? Airbnb, booking.com, VRBO, and I've got a direct website as well. Okay. Now, I know from my experience with speaking to people in service accommodation that the rent, well, the night, the night charges mm -hmm. fluctuate. Yeah. So how do they fluctuate? Do you manage it? Is it Airbnb has an algorithm in there? So there are, there are a couple of ways. You can use Airbnb's algorithm where they'll do it based on... Um, demand in the area. You can also use a external software, pricing software, which yep. also do it by demand and everything like that. I personally like to do it myself. Okay. Reason being is that I can check in the more every morning what's happening with other people's um, um, accommodation in the area. Yeah. If they put their price up, I'm matching their price. Okay. Or I'm going to go more than their price. Does it go on if there's events as well in, in the town centre? Or yes. city centre, sorry. Yes. So I had, a, I had a guest last weekend as well who came for two days. They were going to a concert. Um, I think it was just over by the O2 centre. And for that weekend, I put the prices up. Okay. Yeah. So it's quite smart because if you know yeah. what's going on in the city... Yeah, then you can adjust your prices and course. you can make more money. And like you said, the location is prime. You don't get a better spot than this, do you? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So what is your occupancy since you've had it? What percentage, if, if you base 30 days on 100%? So on, um, in January when I first launched it, uh, it was 60% occupancy because I okay. had about 10 days out, so about 60%. Yeah. Um, February was fully booked up until the beginning of March, and in March it was about 60% again okay. in total. So if you average it out over the three months, what's your average profit, as in your profit, what you take home, your net profit? So the average has been with this over the three months, it's been, so the first month I made 400 pounds. Yeah. Second month I made a grand. Okay. And then the third month I made five hundred. So Okay, so you look about six hundred and thirty yeah, quid. Yeah. Okay. Which is great. And if you have a number of these and you can multiply it and scale it, yeah. then that could be a really, really great income, couldn't it? Could be, yeah. As long as you manage it correctly. Yeah. So yeah. that leads me on to management. Yeah. So you told me that you like to do a lot of the stuff yourself, as in the numbers, the figures, the nightly charges and stuff like that. You like to watch the market and adjust it correctly. Yeah. Cleaning? Cleaning. Some of the days I do it myself because it's only one unit. Yeah. I live 10 minutes from here. Okay. So it's very easy. If there's problems, I can come. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just easy for me to do it myself. Yep. Plus, also, if I get another, someone else to come in and do it f um, for me, I have to manage them. Okay. I'd rather manage myself than yep. manage someone else for one unit. Okay. Um, when I do expand, I'll then, you know, create a team that can work to how I want them to instead yep. of getting a management company. 
So one thing I have spoken to people about service accommodation is the power of having a cleaning company. Oh yeah. They are key from what I'm being told. Yes, because your cleaning is where, it'll make or break it really. Okay. So say for instance, you've got a fast turnaround, someone books in um, for two nights, then they leave. And you've got someone booking in the same day that they're leaving. Yeah, what's, need... the, what's the, it's like a hotel, isn't it? So yeah. what's the, is it two hours, three hours? What's yeah, the so, lead time? Um, my checkout is 10 a.m. Yep. 10 or 11 a.m., depends. If I'm feeling nice, I'll put it to 11. Okay. If I, if I like them. Um, and then the check-in time is usually 3, 3 p.m. Okay, so you do give yourself four or five hours? Yeah. Okay, so with this one, it's great for you because if your cleaners let you down, you're 10 minutes away. Exactly. So you can get in, you can get need, um, do what needs to be done, change the bedding, change the towels. That's it. Make sure the place is clean. What advice would you give to somebody who's doing rent-to-rent -rent, um, service accommodation, which is like two hours from their house or where they live or work or whatever it is? They need to have a system in place which... Um, they've written for someone to follow. Yep. So even if you've got a, a, a management company in place to do it for you, I, myself personally, would definitely have, okay, you need to do this, then this, then this, then this, send me the proof, and then, you know, move on. Okay. Bedroom, explain obviously how you stage it. Clear as day, you need a bed. Yeah. But what else do you need in service accommodation? You need a side table, a lamp. Um, I put an alarm clock there, which has a charging facility as well. So people can just throw their phone on it to charge. It's also got an alarm. You can set the alarm. Yeah. Um, I did set it for six o'clock. Some of the people didn't like it, they plugged it out. <laughs> so you did that on purpose, or yeah, was that? I did. <laughs> no one's coming back to his service accommodation again. Do you but need you know, bedside tables? Oh, sorry, you said bedside tables. Do you need chest of drawers and wardrobes and stuff, or is that something that you just wanted to put in? Yeah, you, ideally you want somewhere where somebody can put their things. So if somebody's coming for, say, a month yeah. stay, they want to hang up their clothes, they want to put their clothes in drawers, so it's good to have these things in. Yeah. Um, ideally you want them built in in a new apartment, but okay. apartment like this, you have these um, drawers and cupboard in there so they can put their stuff away. Okay, and then obviously this room here is the bathroom, bathroom I'm presuming. Yeah. Yep, very simple. Explain, shower, bath. Shower bath, all the facilities needed. All the facilities, I put hand gel, hand soap, shower gel, um, shampoo as well, yep. toilet rolls. I put um, all the little cleaning things you need, like facial wipes for the ladies, so they can, they can clean And I spotted these off. as well. Yeah, and I also put in these slippers. Nice little touches. Yeah. That's what it is. It's really good. That's it. And the Loch Ness Monsters have um, been put on the beds as well. Yeah, well, they're supposed to be doves or swans, whatever you call it. So you put all the little touches that make it homely. Yeah. So when someone's away from home, nice home comforts, because it's never going to be like home, is it? So exactly. if you can make it as close as possible. That's it. Is that the key to it? Is there any, is that, does that help or? It does help because then you get better reviews. People will come back. They'll recommend people as well. You know, when you go somewhere, I've, I've had it before, I've gone somewhere and it's, it's terrible. The place is nice, but you don't have anything there. You've got nothing in the kitchen to, if you want to make food. You've got nothing in the bathroom to wash yourself or anything like that. You've got to go buy these things yourself. So when you're giving one of these units out, you want to put those things there to make it easy for people. They don't spend more money. They just come in, everything's there. Okay. And they can just rest or do whatever they're doing. Perfect. Let's go and ask you some more questions. We're in it now, you do it. What's the goal? The goal is to have maybe six units. I want, I want, I want units that are bringing in about £3,000 a month. Okay. So that's my goal with it. Um, Gross? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's my goal with it. And... Um, we can get this, it's very achievable. Once you start, once you start doing it and you've got your, your rhythm, your systems in place, how you're going to manage them all, it's very doable. It's just getting good going out and finding the actual units you want to use. That's a bit that I'm still, like, it still baffles me because how does an average person who's just getting into property get somebody to convince them to do a rent to rent? Well, you, you can't be average, you know? Average is not, you know, the level you want to be at. You want to be above average, you want to be the best. Yep. So you need to make yourself the best in order to get there. That would mean personal development, work on yourself, know what you're doing, be able to um, show that to the landlord that you know what you're doing, you know how you're going to run it. And also, um, if, if they're a bit skeptical about you, show them what you're going to do. You know, teach them so they understand it more. But you can't just be average because your average Joe is not going to be able to do it. Because so out of Let's say out of 10 people, maybe one or two will, will make, make it a success. Or yeah. even get a unit. Yeah. 
because I know so many people that are doing rent to rent and can't even get a unit. And I watch it every day. And that's why I'm very skeptical on these courses on rent to rent yeah. and, and people paying to learn it because learning it is easy. Yeah. It's physically going out there as a person and getting someone to give you the keys to their property. That's it. And like you said, if you're average, you have no chance of getting someone because if, you, if you're unconfident, uh -huh. if you're awkward, uh -huh. if you're shy, if you don't know how to speak and you don't know how to get things across, yeah. the person who's saying, there's my keys to my apartment or building, they're going to be like, no, this is not the person I want to manage my exactly, property. Exactly, exactly. And you got to understand the landlords, they want guarantee that they're going to get their rent. That's what they want. They want it covered. If they've got a mortgage, they need that to be paid. If um, they've just got the property outright and they've got no mortgage on it, they still want to make profit from that property. Yeah. And they don't want to give it to somebody who's just going to, you know, not manage it correctly. It's going to be a wreck and they, they don't have any sort of security or, you know, things that's going to make them at ease for giving it to you. So, yeah. Okay. Is it a long-term strategy for you? I would say five years. Okay. Five years. Um, reason being is that I want to do flips, as you know, I want to do flips and I want to get into development deals. And that's where long term I want to be. Um, but this is just the start of, you know, to be honest, the reason I started doing the, the rent to rent here is because I want to show my children how to get into property and do things. Yep. I've been showing them how to do it. They know the ins and outs. And it's something which they're going to take going forward. So if, they, if, if in the future, yep. when we buy our flats and then we want to rent them out, when they get older, they already know how to handle it and they can just pass it over to them. I think your daughter's got a pretty good idea of what to do. Yeah. How old is she? <laughs> She's 10. She's 11 next month. She's like 18 years old. <laughs> she literally hustles me every time she comes into the office. <laughs> Agree to disagree on the £20 each. Maybe £6 each. No, that's... Okay, I'll make you a deal. Whatever's in this pocket, money-wise, it can be that figure or it's going to be a pound each. So whatever's in this pocket, that's what you could win if you get it right. So it's either five pound each, not a pound each, five pound each, or whatever's in my pocket. What do you want, five pound or the pocket? Pocket. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, five pound. Without, without a shadow of a doubt, I end up out of pocket when she comes in because she's, she's got me. Right, she, she's learning well, so she, you know, she's taking it in, so it's good. She's highly intelligent, yeah. um, so that's good. So five years, Rent to rent, service accommodation obviously is your strategy. And obviously, like I said, you want to get into flipping and development. Yeah. That's the long term goal. And there are steps into everything. You have to, of you course. know, education is key. Yeah. And being around the right, per uh, sorry, being around the right people, networking is key. Um, give someone some advice. Tell the, tell the people at home who are watching this what you need to be successful in rent to rent service accommodation. So you need to be consistent in going out there and trying to find the deals, find the properties, speak to landlords, even speak to agents. This one here I got from an agent. Now, I have a good relationship with the agent now. They're passing me deals more or less every week. Do you want to take this? Do you want to take this? But that's because I've shown that I'm competent in what I'm doing and I know how to handle it all. You also have to be professional and you also have to um, know how to set up the business and do it right. Yes, you need to be educated in how to you know, go about doing this and that, but there's a lot of training out there, which I think is BS, to be honest with you, because when I first did it, I learned from listening to podcasts. So that just tells you something. That's good. I like that because there is a lot of nonsense out there. Oh, yeah. A hell of a lot of nonsense. And I have one final question, actually, which I should have asked earlier on, but it's just come to my, to my, to my mind. Rent to rent. Mm. A lot of people say it's illegal. It's not illegal. Please explain why it's not illegal. So rent to rent is not illegal because you're taking the company on on a management agreement as a company let. So you make a company, everything goes through your company name. Obviously your company needs to be set up legally, otherwise you're doing it legal anyway. Um, if you were, say for instance, just a tenant renting it on an AST from a landlord, and then you went on and tried to rent out the rooms by yourself, that is illegal, that is what is subletting, and that's what you can't do. I like the explanation. Oh. I understand it because when I got yeah. told about it, I asked the question, found the right person and got exactly what you just said. So I always get messages saying, oh, rent to rent's illegal, rent to rent's illegal. Great explanation as to why it's not illegal, if it's done correctly. That's it. Um, I have no other questions. Nothing at all. You, no? No, because I'm not a huge fan of rent to rent. But the more I go out and do these videos, mm. the more I start understanding it, the more I start seeing 
there is a gap in the market for it. Yeah. It clearly does work for some people, but I still think if there was 100 people who wanted to do rent to rent, only one would be successful. Yeah. That's my opinion from the people I meet. Mm. Um, and that's down to their persona and the way they carry themselves. Because I own a lot of properties, and if someone came to me to do a rent to rent, the answer would be no immediately. Mm. But if someone came in with a lot of knowledge and convinced me, and I could see clearly they knew what they was doing, or they could show me they'd done it before, yeah. successfully, mm -hmm. um, set up a company, and they could guarantee me the rents. And if someone actually gave me a personal guarantee as well, I yeah. would probably consider it now. Yeah. Um, guys, don't message me. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> doing it at the minute. I want about people I know. But yeah, I, I'm, thank you very much. No problem. And you. you always fill me with confidence when we speak because you do know, well, you do know what you're doing. So when I have conversations with people like you, I actually pay attention and listen because you. you do come across well and you have the knowledge. I appreciate So thank that. you very much for today. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. There you have it, guys. On my head, paranoid line in my bed. Pray to God they don't turn my shirt chair red. I was lost, didn't know me. Introduced myself to Cody. Six months was a dope fee. Philly didn't even know things. There was a low me. Swear to God, it was a old me. Anything you ever told me, anything you ever showed There you have it, guys. Another video on rent to rent, serviced accommodation. This is my second one, and it is kind of changing my opinion in some aspects. Now, I'm not a fan of rent to rent. A lot of people know why I'm not a fan of rent to rent. I believe that you're building a business based on someone else's assets, which just doesn't sit right with me personally. So I'm still not 100% convinced. And I do believe there is a market for it, as you can see. I don't think all the success stories that I see on YouTube are completely real. I think a lot of it's fabricated, but out of 100 people, maybe one or two people could actually get a rent to rent from somebody. So on that basis, I'm going to do a lot more videos on rent to rent and I'm going to get so many different perspectives over the next year that I can form more of an opinion based on a number of people's knowledge, experiences and businesses. And on that note, I'm going to be ending this video. Please subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, Turn your notifications on because we're releasing three videos a week now. And if you have any questions, comment down below and I will answer them in a question and answer that we are going to be shooting every fortnight. See you later.